What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. Live look right here at Pounds. You're currently up over 13% with their after hours earning release. They absolutely killed it, guys. Earnings season is in full swing, but that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be about how bullish can this market get. With over $6 trillion still sitting on the sidelines while the market is at all time highs, when are they going to get in? Are they the reason why dips keep being bought up? And should we start buying in on dips ourselves because we have seen a significant amount of upside here over the last four months straight? Right now, if you guys haven't yet, of course, do me a quick favor, guys, smash that like button, engage with the video. First the intro, then the info. Let's get it. All right, guys, let's get into this. So I do want to get into an interview with Tom Lee from Funshot because he does break down how bullish this market can really get. And I think there's a lot of upside there. Quick reminder, if you haven't yet, of course, guys, smash the like button, engage the video. And also, who do you guys have winning the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers or the Chiefs? I know this is really a sidetrack question, but I do want to say that you guys who have been in the, in the comment section below have been basically right 80% of the times throughout this season. So help a brother out now. Let me know. Who do you guys got? Kansas City or San Francisco? I'm going to be down there taking down notes and jotting, you know, who's going to be winning this vote. So let me know your thoughts. Take a second, pull over, whatever you guys are going to get, got to get done, do it because it has been helpful. Thank you guys very much for all your thoughts on all your wins. Uh, I feel like when I win, we win. You know what I mean? So let's, let's keep that going. Okay. For those of you guys who don't bet, don't worry about it. All right, guys. So all jokes aside, the SPY right now, sitting pretty, okay? Currently consolidating, seeing an inside day candle here on the daily. I do like this low volume sell-off day. It seems to me more bullish than not. The dip got bought up pretty quickly today. I was expecting more of a pullback down towards that 489 level. We didn't even get that. Now, as long as we continue to consolidate at like above these previous all-time high levels here, I would be looking for more upside until they give us a reason not to be. For example, until we do get price action breaking back down below 489, I'm gonna remain bullish on this market. Um, the Fed has remained pretty hawkish in regards to not wanting to cut rates immediately, and the market simply does not care, right, at this time. Um, I guess my overall sentiment in the in the market right now is cautious, I guess, I, that's the way I would describe it. It's just simply because, you know, I am aware that we are due for some sort of healthy pullback eventually. I don't want to front run. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I did swing spy puts over the weekend, just one, because um, I wanted to get an idea for, you know, how it was going to pay out and how it was going to play. And I haven't played puts in so long. I need to warm up a little bit, right? But that being said, you know, the market is looking pretty good right now. So as long as we do maintain uh, above 489 for the market, you know, I would be okay with seeing this thing completely consolidate and trade sideways up and down here until we see a break over all time highs again and start trading in a new range. Because this is a new range we're trading in right now and we're maintaining it so strong right now that it's really giving people the idea that, you know, we may not be seeing a pullback here for quite some time. Anyways, guys, enough about that. Let's get into this interview with Tom Lee. If you guys haven't yet, of course, smash the like button, engage the video. Here we go. All of it takes us to our talk of the tape. What it will take to keep stocks moving even higher from here. Let's ask Fundstrat's managing partner and head of research, Tom Lee. He is with us live today. Tom, welcome back. Thank you, Scott. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Uh, this is a remarkable market. What is driving this and what is driving this continued acceleration as we hit this final stretch today? Scott, I, I think 2024 is revealing the stock market is getting stronger uh, because it is proving to be extremely resilient. You know, last week, Tesla missed, fell 11%. The S&P was up for the week. This week, we had two big, two big fangs, miss and uh, disappoint. And the market's, of course, roaring um, as we end the week. It's a 14th consecutive week. I think it has a lot to do with, one, the economy's incredibly resilient. The Fed, I think, has turned dovish. We don't know the timing of the first cut. Uh, inflation, I think, is falling basically like a rock. And we know there's a lot of cash on the sidelines because there's over $6 trillion sitting in money markets. And yet the S&P, you know, is, is just in the last six weeks generated more return than an entire year of owning money market cash. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. So uh, March doesn't matter. I mean, is that is that the lesson of this week? Uh, yes, I think. Um, so what he's saying, just just to be clear here, because I'm, I'm listening, I'm enjoying it, but I have break this down just to make sure that people in the back that may not have heard it. What he's saying is the market's not necessarily reacting to the individual thought process of the Fed members saying whether or not we should be cutting for March or we should be cutting for the following FOMC meeting in May. Right now, they have two FOMC meetings, guys, and this part's very key because I think, um, you know, a lot of these 
percentages have been getting shifted a lot and it's important to keep that part in mind here uh we're roughly at 124 so i'll go back to that in a second okay look at this right now for the march um percentage we have a 16.5 percent chance of, of us seeing a rate um a rate cut okay that was a little bit higher just one day ago it was 20 percent, and then before that it was 46 percent. one week ago one month ago it was 64 percent. so you can see the trend here it seems like the chance of us seeing a rate pause next month seems to be getting higher and higher and higher it was at 31 52 80 and now it's 83 percent. now that being said for may the chance of us seeing a rate cut for May is at 52%. It was previously at 59%, 51%, and 36%. So that's kind of maintained the same level here. The market does not seem to be reacting negatively to the rate staying higher for longer, which everyone originally thought that it would. But that being said, we're in a current market that is roaring, as he did say. All right, All so it takes us to our let's just go back to that 124 mark where we were. $6 trillion dollars sitting in money markets. created more return than an go. entire year of owning money market cash. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. So uh, March doesn't matter. I mean, is that is that the lesson of this week? Uh, yes, I think. Um, well, I think it, the bond market really cares whether it's May or March. Uh, I, I think that the stock market really should just care that the Fed has gone from fighting inflation and almost giving the economy a heart attack to one where they're trying to manage the business cycle. So if they don't feel comfortable doing this cut in March, and instead of me, I don't think it should have any effect on equities and how they do today. The interesting part, I guess, is what you allude to. It's sort of this change in focus of, of the Fed. And I think Chair Powell alluded to this as much in the news conference when he cited, I think on multiple occasions, the strength of the labor market is not necessarily a bad thing anymore, so to speak. They don't feel perhaps as though they need to really lean on that to get inflation to come down because they've been surprised to the degree that it's already been coming down. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, I think the biggest evidence this week was the ECI, the Employment Cost Index. You know, that number came in very tame and I barely mentioned the labor market in the last press conference. I think it's because the job market is still adding jobs. I mean, today was a big surprise, but the unemployment rate's not really uh, falling precipitously and it's not creating a lot of wage pressure. So it's so far, I think the labor market isn't going to be the source of the concern for the Fed. And that's really what I wanted to go over, guys. We are looking at Palantir right now, currently up 14% in the after hours. We will see red days. We will see green days. But overall, we're still in a very bullish market that could definitely see some healthy pullbacks. But there's a lot of money on the sidelines waiting to get in. So it seems like the dips will continuously be bought up. We're looking at in 2022, we saw things like Meta trading at 99 bucks 100 bucks 89 bucks now currently over 400 we have seen a significant push in the market now people really want to know okay cool when's the chance to get in it's always a chance to get in as long as you're thinking long term and you can afford to ride those ups and downs all right guys now my name is tmi i'm the mass investor thank you guys very much for tuning in do not forget two things guys one who do you have for the super bowl in the comment section below what charts do you want to see tonight in the comment section below the third thing is if you haven't yet smash the like button engage with the video subscribe to the channel or hit that little bell notification so you guys get notified when i go live catch you guys in the next video much love deuces